What's up, Internet? We are here with part four, I think, of this, and I'm not going to lie, I'm going to completely break tradition here as we move towards uh, Cerulean City with our still-poisoned Charmeleon, which is quite appropriate for all this, because the typical structure of a story is... You know, you go through the plot, you make a mistake, you spin the wheel of morality, and you learn your life lesson for the day. But I'm just going to cut to the chase and tell you what the life lesson of the day is, which is, don't get food poisoning. I know it sounds glamorous, but it's a horrible thing and you should never do it. <laughs> Seriously, I, I'm just feeling horrible today because of that. Uh, what's TM4? Uh, up ahead we have... Whirlwind. That is not very useful to us. Um, but uh, we have Cerulean City up ahead, which is interesting because it is a town that lets us do a couple of things at once. Also, notice how this is basically a completely one-way road. So once we hop down there, we won't be able to get back. Oh, Flammy fainted. Sorry, Flammy. I'm explaining a kind of design flaw about this. There's no way for us to get back right now. We have to go through some extra stuff to get there. But, uh, yeah. We gotta go to Cerulean City. I'm just uh, gonna check my Pokemon levels. Okay, interesting. Um, but we've got three major goals in Cerulean City. One of which we can't do anything about right now, and that is get a bike. We, we have to go to the next town before we can do that and do a bunch of other stuff. But, right now, we have to... Go to the Nougat Bridge, clear all that, and deal with the stuff behind there. And we have to go to the gym and beat up a girl and take the gym badge for our own. But because I think that uh, there's going to be a bit of a level difference between us and the gym leader right now, we're going to go to the Nougat Bridge. Um, before we do that, though, I want to go to that little grass patch we saw and level up a little bit, because I want to uh, just see if we can level up a little bit. I'm not sure what the Pokemon levels are around here, but uh, ideally I'd like to get uh, Dope Fish to at least level 15 if we can. Level 8, that's not ideal. We might just have to skip it and go to the Nougat Bridge anyway. So I, I think we'll probably do that. Uh, I was hoping they'd be at least level 10 for experience because I, I know I've been saying this, but I'm pretty sure uh, Dope Fish will learn tackle by level 15, and then we can start actually using him for what little that means, but given that uh, it's two levels we need to get, well, like one and a half probably at this point, and given the fact that they're level 8, it's not really ideal to do that, so we'll just go heal up once again and go try and fight the Nougat Bridge a little bit, and hopefully he'll uh, hit level 15 by the time we end it, but uh, the Nougat Bridge, it's basically a gauntlet match of sorts, and uh, uh, there's a gold nugget for winning, of course, hence the name Nugget Bridge. Oh, uh, we should put Jiggle Jim away, and since we have an extra Moonstone, and since we only need one for uh, Bryant, we might as well use it on Jiggle Jim just to fill out our Pokedex a little, and then we're just going to put him in the PC to digitize him into data, because that's how things work. If nothing else, he looks very happy and has a fantastic haircut, which he deserves because he saved us last episode, like three times. I I'm quite impressed with Jiggle Jim, I have no interest in ever using him again, but I think if nothing else, he deserves that fantastic haircut. He was a winner for what little he needed to do, which was basically nothing, and he did significantly more than nothing, so I'm impressed. Anyway, to the Nougat Bridge. If I recall, behind this house there's a hidden item. We're not going to go get it, though, because I don't think it's all that useful. And here's Fafimon. Just in our way, as he always is. And he's caught some more monsters, so we might be in trouble. He's probably got levels on us, too. Also, I just... I am not sure what we're going to be... Okay, he's level 16, so we're in trouble immediately because our highest is uh, 15. I guess we'll go with Brian, because if nothing else, we've got uh, Horn Attack against him. I'm not sure if he's uh, got Whirlwind, which 
in general, it isn't a useful attack against other people, but it's an issue in terms of it swapping out other people. But for the most part, it's not that big a deal. Ah, yeah, see, missing already. But we've already, like, taken damage, so we're kind of committed to this fight, which is a problem. I'm hoping Bryant makes it. I'd like to not uh, faint him, though. Oh. Wish I had quick attack, but, uh... Hit? Oh, I missed. Okay, we gotta swap out, because Bryant's not gonna make that. Um, I guess we'll go with Zephyr. Because quick attack... If we don't get sand attacked, quick attack will at least mean we can take him out. So leveling would have been ideal, but we're not in the best shape, and we'd have been sitting around that one patch of grass for a while, not doing anything. Okay, Abra. This is good. This means we can basically get a free level. And I remembered him getting an Abra, which is actually kind of why I wanted to get an attack on Dopefish, because Abra is basically a useless Pokemon. It can't do anything other than run away, which means I'm probably going to swap to Bryant, get a free... Uh, free experience against a monster that can't do anything. Again, mainly because we can't uh, use dope fish to do it, but uh, such is life. At least uh, Bryant might get a level out of it. Although I'm not entirely sure what the next... Yeah, still didn't get a tackle, which means it's the next one. Rattata, okay. So I think we're going to use our Pidgey against Rattata. I know that means that we're probably going to end up going after Squirtle with Flammy, which is far from ideal. Uh, it's probably a War Turtle at this point, but... And we might just lose this fight in general. Which does seem to be the case. Hyper Fang, that's... That move's got a high crit rate. I guess we're just going to hold out until we, uh have to use Flammy uh, Tackle, that'll do it. Not the most ideal fight, but we can sit here and beat our head against a brick wall, fight him over and over if we need to. Uh, we'll go with Ember. I'm surprised I'm faster than his Rattata. I really figured his Rattata would get us. That's not good, though. Um, so yes, we will probably lose against him, but the fact that we're so close without really any grinding doesn't hurt my feelings. Uh, we won't swap back simply because there's no way we'd survive if we did. We'll use Make a Punch because Tackle's going to be about as useful as anything else. Well, we might beat him. If it doesn't use Water Gun, we might have him. Oh. And I was ready to say die. Flammy didn't give up on us, though. Take that, Fafimon. <laughs> yes, I did win already. Okay, now I want to point out, he went to Bill's house, and then just decided it would be a better use of his time to hang out on some bridge and waited for us. And that kind of shows us how big of a jerk Fafimon is, because... Because I played this game already, I... I I've seen the future of where this game goes, and Bill is currently trapped and in dire need of help, and Fafimon did nothing. He just stole a look at all of Bill's rare monsters and ran off, and then decided it would be a good use of his time to just hang out on a bridge and wait for us. So yes, Fafimon is kind of a giant jerk, but he's a giant jerk that we kicked his ass, so, you know, somewhere along the way, it kind of bounces out a little. But uh, I, I was really hoping we could have gotten to see some fighting with Dopefish against his Abra. Unfortunately, it was not the case, but the Nougat Bridge should at least let us level him up, I'm hoping. It's the Nougat Bridge! Beat five trainers to win a fabulous prize. A load of Nougat. It's a bug catcher. With a cat or I'm not scared of you. I'm kind of sad uh, Flammy leveled, honestly. I could have uh, used him to take you out. Okay. Well, let's use Zephyr. Because birds eat worms. I think that's a direct quote from the actual anime. 
teaching you how birds eat worms and thus are better than bug Pokemon. And speed reduction, that's that can be a big deal, but when you're up against bug types, it's not really that big of an issue. And you're a bug catcher, so I don't think you've got anything worse than maybe a Weedle. I don't think you've got a Beedrill, so I'm not exactly worried. Yeah, you got a Weedle, I'm not scared. Although that said, if we only had three monsters, we would probably be tied with uh, Fafimon in terms of levels right now, or at least closer. We we've sunk some uh, experience into Dopefish, and I'm hoping at least it pans out for a little while. I don't plan on using them all the way through, but I think having a fourth monster could be useful, but Magic Carps are just giant time sucks, really. Like, that's why stuff like Experience Share exists nowadays, is so you don't have to do what I'm doing right now. Which is really only just because I'm indulging nostalgia. It's like, oh, you'll send me a magic carp. That's awesome. I'll use it. Why not? <laughs> of course I get poisoned. Because I always get poisoned. Uh, let's make another trip back to the Pokemon Center. Level 17. Awesome. Well, at least we're leveling. And hopefully we'll get uh, a, another evolution before we have to fight Misty. I'd like to, at the very least, get Zephyr to 18, which I think is the Pidgey's leveling point. And therefore would be like the ideal place for us, because at least with the evolution we'll get a bit of a strength boost. I don't want to talk to you again, go away. I still have no idea what I want to use for, like, my full team. <laughs> I, I've got our three all-stars, and a magic carp I'm willing to trade off at any point, but I have no idea what I want to add to at least get the other two. Now it's serious. No more Weedles for us. Serious. Seriously, only two, and it's a Pidgey. That's lower level than my Pidgey. Serious. Alright. Gust. Because serious. Now we'll go Pidgey against Pidgey, because why not? <laughs> it missed and it failed. It's a good uh, exchange. Although you have done more damage to me. I don't ideally want to go for another trip to the Pokemon Center. At least before fighting someone else. Quick Attack. Quick Attack doesn't do a lot of damage, but it can be useful in a lot of situations. Which, for a normal attack that does, like, I think, base 20 damage, it's, uh... You have a female Nidoran. I've got a, fe I've got a male uh, Nidorino. This will be a fun little matchup. Doesn't uh, Nidoran level up at 14? You could have leveled your monster. Or is it 15? I can't remember. Oh well. You know, it's funny, I named my, uh... Nidoran after Regal Bryant, and I don't think I'm gonna actually be learning the kick attacks that this monster learns. <laughs> I just, uh, named it after Regal because he becomes a king, I figured it'd be kinda noble-sounding. I'm sure there was a better name I could've come up with if I thought about it. Like, obvious Gurren Logon reference. Although, that that would have been probably pretty obvious. But that's not the moral of the story today. The moral of the story is not, take time to think about whatever you're going to reference. It's, don't get food poisoning. So we learn from that mistake, and we're not going to get food poisoning here. Mainly because you can't in-game. Although I did get poisoned, so, you know. I'm not adhering to my own rules. I guess. But we defeated the last, and that's all that's important. And you lost because you have lower levels and the same monsters I have, but crappier. Number three, it won't be easy. That might actually be true, because I didn't heal up, but I didn't want to waste too much time. He's serious. He's got serious crossed arms. And a Rattata. Don't have Hyper Fang on your Rattata, please. I can handle everything a Rattata can throw at me, but Hyper Fang's mean. And I don't want to deal with that again. <laughs> 
I think that just has a naturally high uh, crit rate, too. Uh, horn attack is still probably our best move with Bryant. Take that. Your stupid Rattata couldn't crit me, but I could crit you. Alright. Ekans! Actually, I think that grass outside of uh, Cerulean has Ekans in it. Not that I think we really need them, but uh, if we wanted one, that would probably be where we'd need to go to get one. And we'll go back to Bryant, hopefully level him up, or we'll swap to Flammy or something. I don't know. Ugh, it's one of these trap moves. Again, doesn't do a lot of damage, but you can't do anything while it's happening, which makes it kind of just annoying. And I think uh, later iterations would have it be like a bare minimum three turn attack, which makes it even worse. But you could at least uh, swap your monsters out when it happens, I think, in newer games. I don't know, I've never seen a lot of reason to get an Ekans or an Arbok. Poison types don't really do it for me, although I'm saying that using a poison type. But, uh, Nita King has a lot of uh, flexibility as well, so. A Zubat! Stupid Zubat being stupid. But fortunately, the only thing about Zubat we really have to fear is Supersonic. If it doesn't do that, we're fine. Because Leech Life does basically nothing. I should just stop talking entirely. <laughs> uh, hurt itself in confusion. And then Leech Life's. That's just salt rubbed in the wounds there. Damn it. I mean, the nice thing is it doesn't do a lot of damage, but we still have to deal with that confusion, which is really the greatest threat of Zubat ever impose on anything, really. It's just, you might hurt yourself. Which means you won't get to hurt me, and you'll take extra damage each turn. Ugh, seriously. Confusion is just terrible. And you can stack it on other uh, status afflictions, so there's value in creating like a monster that can uh, cause confusion. But dealing with that is just annoying. And if you're not into like directly fighting your opponents, confusion is just bad. <laughs> Because you can't do anything about it, and fighting it sucks. Let's heal. Heal, heal. And maybe we'll get to fight uh, one more guy, and then we'll have to fight the last guy, which is kind of like a boss. What do you have to say? Yes, I've heard about Bill, the Pokemaniac. No, I don't care. Let's go. Uh, I think there's oddishes outside of town, too, if we wanted, like, a grass monster that could evolve twice. But, I don't know. I, I like oddish, I do not like its evolutions all that much. And honestly, I, I don't think oddish is a good monster to begin with, so... Number four, getting tired, yes, but I went to the Pokemon Center to deal with that, so... You know. I wish it was a little closer, but, you know. What can you do? Another Pidgey, although this one's level 16, so it's a little higher level. And... what the hell, we'll throw our Pidgey out as well. I know all your moves, therefore I have the advantage. <laughs> then we'll get into like a sand attack fight. <laughs> but it failed. I mean, I guess I could just start quick attacking you as well, and uh... I would be about as effective, if not more, because we've got slightly higher damage, I guess. There we go. Seriously, why does our magic carp not just gain level? And you're just a copy paste of the previous person who also had a Pidgey and Nidoran. Except you have like an extra two levels on them. That's a lazy Pokemon trainer design. Eh, we'll go back with Zephyr. I'm, I'm sure it won't be that big of an issue. And then if Zephyr gets taken out, we can swap to something else. I guess we'll start quick attacking because it seems about as useful as gusting. And at least we move faster than you, regardless. Okay, that could be a problem. Though. Lowering our, our uh, base damage output is a problem. It seems weird that Gust is like registers a normal attack instead of like a flying attack though. Cause that, that just seems like a flying attack. 
And, and I think they do change it in the future, but... Ooh, can we quick attack ourselves a victory? Yes, we can. Hooray, level 15. And learn tackle. Hooray. Now we can get in some fights with uh, dope fish as well. I'm number 5. Notice there's a guy on top of us who's like the final guardian of Nougat Bridge. So really, it's the bridge of 7. Or 6, because I can't do math. Food poisoning, it takes away your ability to do math. They don't tell you that. But in addition to all the horrible vomiting and nonsense, math. Those, those math skills just go out the window. Tackle. Lowers defense, that could be a problem. Because I still would like to, you know, level. Karate chop. Yeah, I guess that would be our complete fighting style of dope fish. Um, hmm. I could swap to Zephyr because flying is stronger than fighting. Although, I'm not sure how that tracks in the standard understanding of rock, paper, scissors. There's no logical connection to that as far as I can tell. I guess you'd have trouble punching something that can fly above you. But without any uh, flying attacks, we wouldn't be all that effective, and we've got no health. So I guess we might as well just swap to Bryant and see what we can do with that. Because fire damage would be about as effective as... Well, actually, no. Normal will do less, I guess, because Mank is a fighting type. Huh. I guess uh, fighting hasn't been made strong to normal yet, which is okay in my book. Okay, now because this last guy is basically a boss, we're probably going to have to heal beforehand after just in case, because I believe he's a Team Rocket guy, and uh, he's a little bit stronger than the rest of the people on the Nougat Bridge. Also, there's a quick cameo by the police officer. That house is where we need to go to leave this town. Because that makes logical sense. You leave town by trespassing in someone else's house and cutting through their backyard. But, compared to Metarot where you have to do that, you just walk through a hole in the wall. Whereas in Metarot you have to climb through a window, which is the only time in the game you do that. And it's like, not telegraphed anywhere that you need to do that. As far as I've been able to tell, anyway. So at least here it makes a certain level of sense. Whereas in Metarod it was just obtuse, and that, that was the only time in Metarod that the game was remotely confusing. Despite the fact that, that game is entirely in Japanese and I can't read a lick of it. So, uh, go play Metarod. That was also a game that had multiple uh, versions of the exact same game. Hooray! We got a gold nugget, which we can sell for, I think, like 5,000 Poké Dollars. No. I don't want to join you dorks. No. Da 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 Sorry, I, I know the song by heart. He doesn't look like a rocket grunt, but he was. And he has an Akans. Also, his at least his starting monster is functionally weaker than the previous uh, Pokemon trainer, which had level 16s. So that was a crit. That's depressing. But, uh, what can you do? And at least we're, uh, saving our other Pokemon from taking any damage while I weaken this guy. Although I think Dopefish is going to have to continue to leech experience. Probably until it evolves. But, you know, that's how things go. <laughs> Ain't that a thing. Just get poisoned at every... God damn turn. Okay. Again, don't get food poisoning. That's the rule of the day. So, uh, Dopefish clearly not listening to the wheel of morality on this one. But it's very important that you do because food poisoning is not fun. <laughs> there we go. Took the Ekans out. Rocket's about to use Zubat. We'll swap back to Dopefish, and then I guess we'll uh, give Zephyr another go and finish off the job. And because, of course, we're trying to leech experience until he evolves, which I think is level 20, which is going to be a fun number of levels to go. Um, until that point, I guess we're going to have to just worry about him, which means we have to go take him to the Pokemon Center. But 
at least we're taking out this uh, Team Rocket guy who is the boss of the Nugget Bridge and yet significantly weaker than the guy before, which is just... That's just bad pacing is what it is. Quick attack. You will learn to fear my Pidgey. A lot of people underestimate the Pidgey, but clearly the Pidgey is the best flying type. Monster. Yes, I could become a top leader. But I'm not gonna. I've got my sights set higher. I'm gonna be the greatest Pokemon master ever. Without ever catching all the monsters. And getting frequently frustrated with getting poisoned and my stupid magic carp, which is a piece of garbage. But, you know, you gotta bear burdens in every great quest. Ours just happens to be a magic carp. I'm not sure, but I think I'm gonna split uh, Cerulean into two parts. Like, one, uh, finishing the Nugget Bridge and, like, Bill and stuff, and then coming back and dealing with the, uh, the, the gym and, uh, whatever happens after is the next part. I think might be how it's going, because I don't want to have, like, an hour and a half long episode again, like, uh, yesterday. Welcome to the only patch of grass in the game where you can fight Abras. And Oddishes, apparently. Oh, hey, level 14. This might be a good place to uh, level up if we needed. But I don't think we will. I just wanted to fight the guy, and I think there might be, like, a uh, item in this grass as well. Not sure, though. Now, Abra, which we're not fighting right now, but is only available in this patch of grass, is pretty interesting because, as you can see from the fight that we just had against one, it only has one move, which is Teleport, which makes him a giant burden, just as our Magikarp is. However, he actually turns into something relatively quickly that actually becomes useful. And... His, uh... His teleporting can actually be useful because it gets you back to Pokemon Centers quick. Although Dig can do the same thing, so it's an either or sort of thing, except Dig can be used in fights. To an extent other than just, uh running away. So Dig is actually a pretty useful ability. Hyper Fang, critical. Nope, no critical. I'll use Ember. Take advantage of Stab. And uh, I'm faster than the Rattata, which is surprising. I don't recall Charmeleon being like a terribly fast monster. And an Ekans, which means we're probably gonna get poisoned and have to come back and go back to the Pokemon Center again. You know how it is. And we'll go back to Flammy again because uh, Flammy seems to be doing pretty good on his own. And we're wrapped. So Flammy's probably going to go down in this fight. Uh, we probably won't go back to the Pokemon Center though. Simply because we have other monsters. It's only if like one of them gets poisoned that I'd probably go back just because uh, the extra time it takes to go, it might be more just advantageous to go and take another trainer fight and just lose. Whereas, uh, if we're poisoned getting to those fights, we might lose a monster, which isn't ideal, of course. I thought not. Is there an item in this grass? I thought there was. There is not. There are Abras, however. And Quizzically Kakunas. This is news to me. <laughs> I don't think I've ever... I'm just gonna tackle you to death. Something can feel the shame of losing to a magic carp. So this fight will be about five minutes long, I think, because it'll keep hardening and I'll keep doing half damage. And eventually I'll just do one damage, but it will feel the shame of losing to a magic carp. And at the end of the day, is there truly a worse fate than losing to a magic carp? The answer you're looking for is no, there isn't. That's truly the worst fate of all. Now, to be fair, it'd be worse if you lost to a Magikarp that didn't have Tackle, but it would be almost impossible, sort of like, I don't know, being poisoned from the start or something. Which I guess is theoretically possible, but then you'd have to rely on the fact that you'd be starting with a different Pokémon in this generation. Later, you'd get, like, Toxic Spikes or something which could do it, but... In this game, you'd have to poison it with, like, something else ahead of time. Toxic or something, maybe. Also, underrated move. Toxic is amazing. 
it's a move that poisons, and it does more damage every turn, and literally any monster can learn it. So, Toxic, that's a pretty damn good move. I, I like Toxic, it's good for uh, strategically building up your team, if nothing else. But, unfortunately, we do not have Toxic yet, and we won't get it for a while. It's a gym fight reward, I believe. Which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. What do we have here? TM45. Now, is this a good TM? One I can use, or is it a crappy TM that I can't use? Thunder Wave. Do I have anything I can learn Thunder Wave? No, I don't. Thunder Wave could be useful, maybe. Paralyzing. <laughs> Thanks, Brain. If I say paralysis, and then I said paralyzing, so it was like paralyzing. But, uh, paralyzing your opponents can be useful. But, I don't know, I don't have anything to use it, and I don't really think I have a need for it right off. And Hiker's going to use Matchop. Interesting. Hikers typically stick to rock monsters, but sometimes they get fire or firefighting monsters. I guess we'll go with Zephyr, see if we can uh, scrub out a win against him. Not sure we will be able to... No, we're not going to, so let's swap to Bryant. And this is probably the fight that's going to send us back to the Pokemon Center. Because we're not in the best of shape to begin with. And you're getting crits left, right, and center. But such is the nature of RNG. I wonder if you have anything else other than Karate Chop. Not sure you do. An early level Machop probably wouldn't. This is not a ideal fight, I don't think. Okay. So, Geodude, that's not ideal. Uh, I'm really struggling to find any way I can win this fight. Um, I guess we'll swap to Zephyr as a start. He'll probably get taken out in the first turn. Oh, defense curl, okay. Uh, I guess we'll go with Sand Attack Strats. Because I was really kind of expecting that right there to happen. Then we'll swap to Flammy with a fresh turn that won't mean we get attacked first. And see if we can do something with Ember. I was hoping that might do a little bit more, but... Oh, maybe we can do something. I'm not exactly... I'm impressed I haven't gotten hit by that yet. Holy shit. <laughs> it's a miracle of uh, Sand Attack. That's an excellent move, Sand Attack. I'm quite the fan of it. And that's how you somehow scrub out a win like that. Hooray, okay. I think we're gonna go into one more fight because I know we're gonna lose, but it's probably gonna take more time just to walk back to the Pokemon Center at this point. So it might just be faster just to uh, sit here, lose, get teleported back, full health, and come back. So I guess we'll use Dope Fish to uh, just splash. I didn't mean to do tackle, I meant to do splash, though. Totally meant to uh, just use it to psych out the opponent. It's all psychological, of course. That, that's how you play the game well. It's psyching out your opponent, obviously. We're gonna win. He's totally unnerved by my splash attack of fury. Now, we all have to listen to the worst sound ever. Miss. And that's gonna be a critical. Just to rub salt in the wounds. Nope. Okay. I guess we'll go with Bryant next. We'll probably get, uh, Lear. Goddamn controller. And I'm faster than Rotata, that's surprising. Okay, I didn't expect to be able to beat Rotata like that. Spiro, okay. Well, swapping my monster at this point doesn't really matter. I'm surprised I've survived this many turns. Honestly, I, I thought it would take significantly less turns at this point. 
Can we survive this fight? Uh. Oh. Booyah! That's Bryant. I was expecting to die, kinda hoping I was. Still survived. Let's let this guy take us out then. Now because I don't really aspire to do much grinding here, I do want to fight basically every trainer I can. Onyx is, uh, that's not a good fight against Bryant. Not that it matters. Because he's out. And Flammy's going to be taken out pretty soon too, I think. <laughs> Because the best move I have is Ember, which I have stabbed from, and... I mean, if he uses Screech every turn, I guess I could win this fight, too. <laughs> is this happening? I think this might be happening. <laughs> Ah, and there it is. <laughs> so close. Ah, uh, that's depressing. I wanted to see that uh, go all the way through. Just one more turn, I would have had it. Uh, that was kind of amazing. But RNG works both ways. It was being really, really nice to us, and then it was really, really mean to us. Kicking us right as we were about to cross the finish line. Also, Team Rocket guy, we can't just go tell the police, yay, hey, Team Rocket's right at the Nugget Bridge, you can just go there and uh, arrest him. No. And that guy will stay there for the rest of forever, because he always will. First, let's fight. You're asking me again if I'm gonna go see Bill? Dude, we fought like two seconds ago. You do not remember? You have terrible memory. Now, to be fair, that's on a Game Boy game. Not a lot of space was allocated to memory. And I have the dumbest smile on my face just saying that. <laughs> but if you can't make stupid jokes, what can you do? Uh, there it is. Blind out of the gate. Now, I believe this is once again like rap. In fact, it's literally just rap, so I don't know why they had to allocate a second uh, attack with the exact same name. I don't think it does any extra damage either. It might go a little longer, maybe. I'm not sure. Okay. So we're gonna just go sand attack because we still don't really have anything that's particularly good against rock types like that's really our greatest problem right now is we don't have any way to deal with rock types and that'll actually go into us dealing with Misty because if I recall she's got a star me which is water and rock and we don't like have any fighting moves which are like the one physical attack that's really good against rock anyway. I mean, we don't have grass either. I guess we could have caught an Oddish, but I didn't really aspire to have one, although that would have been exceptionally good against Misty. Okay, uh, we should just be able to try and gust our way to victory now. It'll be slow going, but we should be able to gust our way to victory, which means that we won't have to get another monster in which I admittedly would make this fight go faster, but uh, it means we don't have to split the experience more, and that's really what we want to do at this point. Especially because we're still trying to bring up our at least planned temporary fourth to the same level as the other three. But uh, Misty's going to be a bit stressful because we don't really have anything that's effective against her. And, uh, that's pretty much, in terms of gym leaders, where our starting choice of Charmander stops being a problem. Because Charmander has issues with the first two gyms, and then is pretty much fine with the rest. Because the next greatest issue is, like, the second to last gym, which is fire types, which is like a zero-sum fight, so it's not that big of an issue. But, other than that, Charmander should be fine with that. Now, Bulbasaur is good against the first two maybe three fights, but then kind of immediately stops being good and has a lot of trouble like the last two. Oh, our pitchy's out. Might as well swap back to Dopefish then. Let him get all the experience. Get all the delicious experience for yourself. That was a critical and it did one damage. That's terrifying. 
Now the nice thing is, he still has to tackle me like five times. Okay, now we're in trouble. If he's going to tackle us and do a consecutive five damage, that means he'd have to hit us five more times. Six. Again, food poisoning. Bad math. <laughs> but it's surprising he's getting so many hits off on us, given that his hit ratio should be like something like 20% at this rate. Um, we still should be able to win this fight with Dopefish. I mean, if we can't, we still have Flammy with Ember, which Stab alone should take him out, but I'd like for Dopefish to get the rest of the uh, experience. That might bring him up to level 17 with the rest of the uh, monsters too, which is good. Now, I don't remember exactly, but I want to say Misty's like level 20, so we're not in the most ideal place, but we're not in a horrible place either. That's... Now, depending on how many turns Bind goes for, this could be really, really bad for us. Because, of course, we can't uh, swap out while Bind is happening. Now, if he continues to screech or continues to miss us, we're okay. But if he tackles us, we're probably out. But... I think... Okay, now this is a problem. Can we swap out? Hmm? I, I don't think we can. You can swap out during Bind. Interesting. I know later games you couldn't, I, I thought that was continuous to here. Alright, well, I guess Horn Attack, it doesn't really matter what we use. Because the experience is now split, which is kind of the antithesis of what I wanted to do there. And unfortunately, Zephyr's down, I wanted to evolve him by the end of this. But, uh... I think we'll go forward and at the very least level Flammy up, and we'll see what happens after that. Going to the SSN in Vermilion City, that's where we're going next, after Cerulean, with the key goal of uh, getting another gym badge, as well as getting, and we'll swap to Flammy just because he needs the level. Um. But the main goal of the next town is to get, I think, maybe two HMs, maybe? As well as beat another gym. Oh, and get the bike, which we have to do here, but we need to go there to get it. So, that's something we can look forward to, I guess. Now, Slowpoke is an interesting monster. It's got some interesting elements. It's uh, Psychic Water. Uh, I believe it can learn three different HMs, so if you ever wanted a monster that could learn a bunch of HMs, uh, Slowpoke would be one of them. And that's a crit. Well, he's got level 18. Now, because I don't want to, uh... Accidentally beat this trainer without giving Zephyr at least a little bit of experience. We're gonna go all the way back, which sucks But unfortunately Such is the problem when you try and level things somewhat um, Similarly like you want to keep them roughly the same level and that was actually a problem I had when I played Pokemon well first the first time I played it when I only used one monster of course but also the second time because I'd end up with monsters in my team that were like with a difference of like five levels and that's really not good, especially when you're going up against, like, gym leaders, which have, like, a relatively high level compared to yours, because at least early Pokemon games, gym leaders like to have levels that kind of dwarf your own. Like, uh, Brock was, like, almost five levels above us, if I recall. He was, like, level 14, we were level 10. Uh, Misty's not going to be that high compared to us, I don't think, but still, we want to keep our monsters relatively close together, which means... Yes, we're going to waste a lot of time doing this, but long run it's going to save us a lot of frustration having to bring up like stragglers from a lower point because to do that we basically have to do what we're doing with Dopefish now and we don't really want to do that if we can help it more than we need to and it also cuts down on how much grinding we need to do even though, you know, the difference in walking back and grinding is probably about the same really. 
Your boyfriend is cool. Now, is boyfriend one term word or two? I'm not sure if that's actually like a spelling error or not. I don't know, I've never seen the term actually written down. I'm not sure if it's a contraction or what. Nidoran male. I'm worried about the poison here, but let's see what Dopefish can do with his basic tackle attack, which, spoiler alert, isn't much. Eh, we might be able to win this. Although Nidoran, of course, will probably have horn attack and poison sting at this point. Which is not ideal. Yeah. But if you use Poison Sting, we don't get poisoned. That might mean that we end up uh, net doing more damage than him. Eh, crit brings us back into. Ooh, Horn Attack. That's the scary one. Yeah, we gotta swap out. I didn't want to, but uh, we have to. And uh, Poison Sting, we're gonna get poisoned. Ah! Finally, things are looking up. I didn't get poisoned. And Leer's going to have basically no effect on us, because we're going to take him out before he can do an attack. And Zephyr hit level 18. Awesome. Which I think means he should level at the end of this fight. Now Nidoran female. We will probably swap back to Zephyr and just give uh, him the extra experience, because we don't uh, really have any preference to this. And it's better than spreading out damage across our whole team if we want to continue and fight the next two guys. So, we'll probably just quick attack this guy to death. This lady, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Gotta respect uh, gender and stuff. But this little lady is going down. And, uh, at least uh, Zephyr hit 18, which means it should level. And, uh, hopefully we're going to get a step closer to evolving Dopefish as well. Because all the extra stress that's put me through having to use him will at least be at least kind of... Will at least be at least. Thanks, Brain. Uh, it'll be helpful to have another evolved monster, even if it's one monster I don't plan on using for an extended period of time. All that said... Uh, again, I don't have any idea what I want the rest of my team to be past the three I've chosen, so... I don't know, we might use them all the way through to the end, I'm not sure. Okay. Now, uh, the second guy, the guy that's up here, he's guarding a hole to this area that has a tree in it. Which means, if we don't do this right, we'll have to come back here to get that with cut, if we come back here at all, which we probably won't. So if we want that item, whatever it is, and I... I think it's a TM, so it's probably better we grab that. We're going to want to lure him down to the bottom, which means going down here and causing him to walk towards us to shortcut needing to use the uh, HM cut later, because that would be really the only realistic reason to come back here, which, again, we don't really want to do. Okay, now, Geodude fights. Again, I've said it once, I'll say it again, we don't have an ideal way of fighting uh, rock types, but... Flammy with Ember and Stab is still probably our best bet. I'm hoping he doesn't have four Geodudes, but he probably does. The nice thing is they're at least lower level, which I think was a calculated move to try and mitigate people that started with Charmander as well, like, because outside of getting an Oddish, there still really isn't any monsters you'd have at this point, other than your starter, that would be good against dealing with rock types. And I think that is something of a balance issue at this point, it's just... Outside of uh, maybe getting a grass type, which would be a bell sprout in the blue version, or really, really, really uh, leveling your uh, magic card if you chose to get it, uh, there's not really anything you can do about go to up a gout. <laughs> Food poisoning also takes away your ability to speak properly. Although that's a problem I've always had. Um, there's not really a effective way to deal with rock types this early on. Still, and we're almost at like the second gym. The second gym, which also uses a monster that's part rock. So, again, it's real hard to deal with uh, having a Charmander early on because of it, but 
later Charmander kind of becomes tactically the best choice, with the vegetable sort of being in the middle and... I don't know. Squirtle's good against the first gym. It's good against the second last one, and maybe the last one, but um, the rest in between it's just kind of garbage against. In fact, immediately after the second one, it's weak to the elements of the third. And the third one happens, like, right on the heels of the second one. Like, that's another thing. Between the second gym and, like, the fourth, there's a huge amount of time in between. And, uh... Between the second and third, there's no time in between. Between the third and the fourth, there's huge amounts of, uh... Time, relatively, of course. And then, uh... Between the fourth and fifth... Uh, outside of, like, some... I don't want to say side quest stuff, but outside of some, like, extra nonsense, there's not really a lot of, uh, downtime. So the pacing between gyms is a bit awkward. Not necessarily bad, but just kind of weird. And the next gen had a gym that was normal type, which was exceptionally strange. I'm hoping we can handle the next uh, Pokemon Trainer without losing too badly. Scratch. That was just me hammering through the buttons too quickly. Although, at least we got a critical hit out of it, which is... I mean, it's something, right? At least it's something. Hooray! Temporarily turned green for some reason. Maybe our Flammy didn't listen to our uh, moral of the story and also got food poisoning, but only briefly. And uh, Geodude is now burnt, which is good. Because that makes our lives a little bit easier. I want to say this is the last Pokemon trainer we have to deal with. Okay. You want to come down here, and now we've made a handy dandy little hole in that fence that we can go uh, steal whatever that item is. Nice, uh, Scout's outfit guy. Which has Rotata, which means it probably has, uh, Hyper Fang, which means we're in trouble. I think this is Brian's fight, just because he's got the health. I mean, at least we've got a little bit of li lives, a little bit of levels on these, uh, Rotatas. I, I think they learned Hyper Fang at, like, 14, which... Hyper Fang is a pretty powerful attack to be learning so soon. Especially given its high crit rate, but still... I think that guy had one. Okay, and Ekans, which is a poison type. Flammy might be effective. Um, Brian is a poison type, so he'd certainly be effective, but... Uh, we'll give it to Brian, anyway. Just keep this experience sort of, like, uh, shared between our team. Rather effectively, anyway. Defense drop, but we still have horn attack, which is an offensive attack. So your defense means nothing to me. And your rap does very little, so my defense lord shouldn't be too big of an issue. But it does seem weird that there's two attacks that literally do the exact same thing. Both bind and rap are literally like the same attack, which just comes across as a bit odd. That they don't have like, uh any other move in, like, place of that, like, Onyx learns Bind, Ekans learns Rap, but why not just have them both learn Rap and leave that extra space for a different move? TM19, what do we got? So, it was important we strategically did that, because now we have a TM, which is a good item. Now, what ability do we learn? Seismic Toss, okay, this is, assuming the weaknesses still work the way I think it is, it's a game changer. Because Flammy now has a fighting move. Which means, even though Misty has a... Uh, look at his scratch. Because Misty might have water types, which are good against Flammy. But at least uh, whichever star monster she has is a rock type. Which if I'm remembering my elements right and they haven't changed in first gen, is still weak against fighting. 
So, Flammy might be in an awkward spot, but if we have speed over her monsters, Flammy might just be able to rock them pretty hard. Okay. Um, Ekans. I guess we'll use Zephyr. I, I don't really know what we should use in this situation. I think it's rather moot. I like that sprite of uh, Pidgeotto. I'm a big angry bird, so you better get out of my way, you giant worm. Okay, quick attack. So that's still our best move with Zephyr. Defense fell, but it won't matter, because you're quick attacked. And the next one is Sand True, which is a ground type, which tells me... Zephyr's still probably our choice monster against him. So let's go. Accuracy fell, that's a problem. But... Actually, I don't even think it has any ground attacks, really. Outside of Earthquake, what ground attacks are there? Oh, oh, there's Fisher. Okay, there's... Earthquake and Fisher. I, I don't think there's any other ground attacks in this game other than those two, though. We're gonna start missing soon. But it's not gonna matter, because you're down. That's how it's done. And you knew right, because you lost. Out of my way. Oh, come on, there's one more. Okay, this is a fight I'm gonna lose, I'm sure. You're jealous of cute Pokemon, so that means all of yours are ugly by tacit admission. And you've got three. This could be a problem. Oddish. Well, as cool as your vegetable is, and I want to say cute, I have a flamethrower dinosaur. And unless you take me out in the first move, and spoiler alerts, that's not going to do it, you're in trouble. I'm genuinely surprised uh, Normal isn't uh, weak to fighting in this game. Although I guess that's just because there's uh, too few, like, I, I guess, things that uh, Normal is really weak against. Like, I guess that's kind of the point, is Normal is sort of like the equalizer, so it's not going to be weak to too many things, I guess. I, I guess I'm just curious how Normal became weak to... Uh, fighting as time went on. I guess it's just we added more uh, elements, so we had to, I guess, rejigger the entire weakness system, so now Normal's weak to more things. Although, it does lead me to think there's, like, even more balance issues in terms of um, elements in this game, simply because we're not going to see it for a long time, but dragon types. Spoiler alert, there's three dragon monsters in this game. And the only thing Dragon is weak to is Dragon. And those three Dragon monsters are literally all the same evolution line. So it's really just, there's one Dragon type, and it's weak to itself, and that's it. And to be fair, Dragon has been rejiggered to actually be weak to stuff, which was a good move, I think, because Dragon were kind of just created to be all-powerful, as their name would indicate as, you know, the mythical Dragon. They, I guess they should be powerful, but... They just come across as way too powerful in this game. But... I'm surprised I didn't take you out in one hit there. But you know what? It doesn't matter, Oddish. Because you just lost to Flammy. You silly vegetable. Okay. Now this is Bill's house, the guy who uh, Fafimon went and visited and then completely abandoned. Now notice there's this weird Pokemon here. No he's not, it's Bill! So he's been uh, trapped in the form of a Pokemon, if you've been reading the Pokemon Adventures manga to supplement this, which you absolutely should, I think I've said that once before, he's a Rattata. Which kind of looks like at this uh, angle. So I guess that uh, generic Pokemon sprite that most of our Pokemon are is supposedly a Rattata. Although I thought it always looked a little bit like a Cubone. 
But uh, my point is, Fafimon's a jerk because he went to Bill, took all his data on rare Pokemon, found Bill in this horribly, like, problematic state, and just left him to go hang out on a bridge for no reason. Fafimon is a complete jerk. Also, he has created some kind of, like, weird Jeff Goldblum-esque fly scenario messing with Pokemon DNA. Why can't he make his own badass Pokemon? And this comes up later because there is Pokemon, like, genetic experiments that go on. So why Bill isn't involved in any of that, I don't know. Yes. We got an SS ticket, which we need in the next town, to the SS stand. But we can't go there yet, because we still have to go fight a uh, gym leader. Yes, yes, uh, SSN. Now, if I recall, you can go onto his computer and look at his rare Pokemon collection and add them to your Pokedex as seen. I think you can. Maybe that's just in Pokemon Yellow. I'm not sure. I remember you should be able to go take a look at his computer and get, like, all the Eevee evolutions. Which I'm still willing to take uh, suggestions on, although if I'm getting one, I'm kind of leaning towards Jolteon if no one else cares. I don't know. Just because... Uh, I've got a fire type, I'm going after water types at some point, it would be useful to have something strong against them, but I don't know, I don't even think I'm going to use it, who knows. Anyway, that has been the Nougat Bridge, helping Bill where Fafimon was a complete asshole to, because he wouldn't rescue him, and decide he was too cool and just had to hang out on a bridge, waiting for us for no good reason, because Fafimon's a jerk. But, that's the end of this episode. Come back next time where we're going to go beat up a girl, steal a gym badge, and try to get to another town. And maybe stop some crime along the way. But until then, peace out, internet.